Hey what's up guys, in today's video we're going to be going over some interesting news when it comes to a new supposed rumor about 2022's Call of Duty and we're also going to be talking about supposedly the 2018 Marvel Spider-Man used to have an original ending that was cut from the game and I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the recently revealed Elden Ring gameplay. If that sounds interesting, leave a like on the video and consider subscribing if you're new, it really helps the channel grow. The first topic we're going to be talking about has to deal with 2022 supposed Modern Warfare 2, and this is coming from PlayStation Lifestyle, and the headline reads, Modern Warfare 2 2022 campaign will include Ghost, Roach, and Soap. More information continues to leak from the rumored Modern Warfare 2 reboot coming in 2022, including details about the game's campaign mode. Notably, some of the most iconic members of Task Force 141 will reportedly make a return, including Simon Ghost Riley, John on Soap McTavish and even Gary Roach Sanderson. General Shepard will also return, though it's unconfirmed what exactly his role will be. Modern Warfare 2 2022 will also reportedly feature choice-based gameplay that will influence who on your team will die. As noted by leaker Ralph's Valve, one of the campaign missions tasks players with raiding the safe house of a known drug lord. Players will be able to choose how to go about the mission, be it covertly or guns blazing. In another mission, players can choose to fire on domestic military police that they suspect are working for the drug lord. As hinted at the ending of Modern Warfare 2019, the 2022 sequel title will reportedly feature the creation and beginning of Task Force 141. When asked for possible recruits in the 2019's game's ending scene, Captain Price mentioned the names of fan-favorite characters Soap, Ghost, and Gaz. However, Ralph's Valve also reveals that Roach, the main protagonist of the original Modern Warfare 2, will also return along with Lieutenant General Shepard. Barry Sloan is also reprising his role as Captain Price. In addition to these campaign details, the leaker also provides ample information about Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer modes. They also note that Activision plans to add bot pools to multiplayer matchmaking along with an overhauled enemy AI system. The game will track players' skill levels and adjust accordingly in order to counter smurf players, players who intentionally create new accounts or play at lower skill tiers in order to dominate matches. And it goes on by saying some of these supposed game modes and maps that are going to be returning including extraction type game mode, uplink game mode, hostage game mode, centered around close quarters combat, and floor is lava game mode. And some of the maps it mentions is favela, terminal, high rise, shipment, and quarry. There are plenty more details including weapons and weapon modifications. There's reportedly even a progressive weapon camo that will get rustier the more players you kill. Operators are also returning and Infinity Ward is adding the cut ricochet perk as well as a bounty hunter perk. With Call of Duty Vanguard not even released yet, both Activision and Infinity Ward have yet to comment on the new information and we aren't likely to hear anything official until August 2022 when new Call of Duty games are typically revealed. As always, take these leaks with a grain of salt. So I'm not really going to spend too much time talking about the multiplayer part of this article because I'm not really a multiplayer fan. I know the original Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer is one of the most beloved in the series of all time. So I mean, I mean, it's cool that a lot of like these maps and game modes are returning, but I want to stick to the campaign stuff because Modern Warfare 2 is probably my favorite Call of Duty game of all time as far as campaigns go. And one of my favorite characters is Ghost and apparently not only is Ghost, but Roach and Soap are going to be making a return in next year's Call of Duty, as well as Captain Price, you know, and I was hoping this game was already, had already came out, because after I beat Modern Warfare in 2019, I was really excited, I was hoping 2020 was going to be Modern Warfare 2, and then they came out with Cold War, and I only, I only played a little bit of it, and I just got Vanguard today, so we'll see how that ends up turning out, but I am so excited for Modern Warfare 2, especially if all these characters are making a return, and if they do, hopefully the same people that voice them are also going to be returning, and also it seems like General Shepard is going to be coming back. There is probably one name you can say in gaming communities. Whenever you say the name General Shepard, everyone has the same reaction. I remember watching that, what he did in that game, and it just shocked me to my very core. So it seems like he's going to be coming back, and hopefully they don't try and give him like a different role, because no matter what they do, I'm going to have an eternal hatred for that character. And I'm sure you guys will as well. But down in the comment section, let me know how you feel about this rumor. 
are you excited for Modern Warfare 2? And also let me know out of Ghost, Roach, and Soap, who is your favorite character from Modern Warfare 2? Moving on to the next topic in the video, we're going to be taking some time to discuss how the 2018's Marvel Spider-Man apparently almost had a different ending than what actually ended up being in the actual full release of the game. Once again, this is coming from PlayStation Lifestyle, and it says, Insomniac says it changed Spider-Man's final boss fight to avoid crunch and ended up with something better. It goes on by saying, Insomniac Games CEO Ted Price has revealed that the final boss fight in Marvel Spider-Man was originally much bigger, but underwent a significant change because the studio wanted to avoid crunch and brute forcing. Speaking at the Develop Brighton conference via games industry, Price said that the original battle between Peter and Dr. Octavius was going to see them both destroy half of New York City, but accomplishing that would, wouldn't have been possible without crunch. As a result, Insomniac Games opted for a fight that was much more up close and personal. It all worked out though because those final moments had more of an emotional impact, and Price believes that the original idea of breaking New York City would have worked against what Insomniac was aiming for. The temptation is to just brute force it, put our heads down and run through the brick wall, Price explained. But the team took a step back and thought about what was important to the players, and that was the breakdown of the relationship between Peter and his former men mentor, Dr. Octavius. Elsewhere in the keynote, Price emphasized the importance of having diverse development teams. Today, every culture, every race, and every gender has embraced games, which is amazing. We need teams that are as diverse as our audience. Price further revealed that Insomniac is moving away from requiring higher education for its job roles in lieu of experience. This means if someone can't afford to obtain a university degree, experience is a valid substitute. I found this very interesting. I haven't played this game in a while but i do remember vividly the ending of this game and the fact that it was originally planned to be a lot bigger just kind of blows my mind like could you imagine running around as spider-man and just like destroying half of the city because the map is massive like if you go to one of like that the tall towers and just look at the map it is insane like just imagine half of that just destroyed you know i believe Insomniac made the right choice by making the final boss fight a lot more contained because it didn't leave more of an emotional impact, you know, because it's about Peter and Dr. Octavius's relationship fully breaking down. And I feel like if you were just running around New York City trying to catch Octavius or even him trying to catch you, I feel like it wouldn't have really worked as well. So, I mean, this is interesting to find out what studios go through and what decisions they make like years after a game comes out and also i am not a fan of crunch at all a lot of people say that crunch is like a terrible thing which i mean it's not the best thing but at the end of the day you get to sit down and work on something you love you know i'm not advising it but you know like not all crunch is bad but at the end of the day it was insomniac's choice to make and i feel like they made the right choice but what do you guys think do you feel like insomniac made the right choice do you think it might have made the game better if they stuck with their original plan by making you destroy half of New York City? Or are you happy that they ended up changing the final boss fight to avoid crunch? Now to close out the video, I want to take some time sharing my thoughts on what I think about the recently revealed gameplay for Elden Ring. So this is coming from PlayStation Lifestyle and it reads, 20 minutes of Elden Ring gameplay shows off the vast world of the Lands Between special editions revealed. Bandai Namco and From Software have released an Elden Ring gameplay preview featuring more than 20 minutes of footage. After showing off the vast world of the Lands Between, as well as combat and multiplayer, the duo then announced a variety of different additions players can choose from both digitally and at retail. The Elden Ring gameplay preview begins in a very similar location to the leaked gameplay footage seen last month, a mountainous environment that includes giant ghostly trees and mysterious ruins. After pausing at a site of grace, a resting place for the player, a ray of guiding light sends the player and his magically summoned spectral steed in the right direction. The following 20 minutes showcases combat with giant creatures, random encounters, the game map, legacy dungeons with classic from software level design, multiplayer, and more. The gameplay starts after a 14 minute countdown. Those who have been convinced into purchasing Elden Ring can choose from a number of different editions. The digital deluxe edition, which will be available from the PlayStation Store for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4, includes a copy of the game, a digital art book, and the original soundtrack. Alternatively, 
there's the standard edition that can be purchased from retailers that will include a disc copy of the game. Players in Europe, Middle East, and Africa can grab a launch edition that includes a disc copy of the game as well as a poster, art cards, stickers, and a woven patch. Down in the comment section, let me know what you thought about the gameplay. As far as my thoughts, it looked really good. I was kind of worried a few months ago when I found when we found out that it was coming to the PS4 and Xbox One and that it wasn't going to be like a next gen slash now current gen console exclusives. But after seeing this gameplay, it looks really good. I was always hooked from the beginning because I'm a huge fan of Game of Thrones and George R. R. Martin was the guy who created that. And George was also the guy that created the lore and like the, the world building for this game. And even though I am terrible at Souls games, I've only ever played the Demon Souls remake. And I'm only like two hours in because I suck and I've rage quit like three times already. So that'll probably happen with this game. But I don't care. I just think it looks really good. There was one thing as far as gameplay wise and that's stealth. And I feel like I'm going to be using that a lot. This game isn't a linear game. It, it is an open world Souls game. So you can go on and do like the main stuff or you can literally just get on your horse or whatever and just ride around and fighting random bosses or enemies trying to create your own loot and look for outfits and stuff so it seems like this game is going to be really good sadly it did get delayed from january to february 25th i believe so it's been delayed about a month but i will be pre-ordering it and if you guys are excited for it and if you got if you guys are going to be pre-ordering elton ring let me know what edition you are going to be pre-ordering and if you're going to be buying it for the PlayStation or the Xbox. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure to turn on the post notification bell. That way you don't miss any of my next uploads. Until next time guys, take care.